Welcome to Entreprogrammers Podcast, the podcast for developpreneurs, with your hosts, Josh Uro, Derek Bailey, and John Sonmez. The podcast where you get to be a fly on the wall listening to real conversations of three developers trying to tackle the challenges they face as entrepreneurs. The Entre Programmers Podcast is brought to you by SignalLeap.com. It's not just the best audio host for your podcast, it's also the only podcast host that we'll talk about during the Entre Programmers Podcast. Because SignalLeaf is one of the services that I'm building and often used as fodder for information that we talk about during the Entre Programmers Podcast. So check it out at SignalLeaf.com. It's podcast hosting without the headaches. It seems like we got pretty good reception on the, on the, first, on the launch. Oh, sweet. Yeah, how do, I haven't heard anything yet, so... Um, I just wanted to check the... Have you been looking at the stats, Derek? Um, I haven't. I should have been. Um, looking now. Yeah. So 347 users and 840 page views. Not too bad. Um, is, is this... Um... That's the, that's the uh, Google Hangouts. Or, sorry, uh, Google Analytics. Okay. Oh, okay. Let me look at Signal Leaf real quick. Yeah, I'm seeing for Signal Leaf 737 total podcast listens. Oh, nice. So that, I think that's pretty good. 59 RSS subscribers. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, so that's I think that's that's pretty good for 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 launching for starting out. So yeah, yeah, definitely. So I've got the iTunes uh, um, done as well. Let me grab a link to that. I actually I need to put the link up on the site as well, uh, but the, oh man, our artwork is, <laughs> this is bad. What's that? <laughs> if, uh, I'm going to, I'll paste the iTunes link in the chat here. Okay. And our artwork is a transparent PNG and they put a black background on it. Oh, great. So you can't read it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> the speech bubble. <clears throat> Yeah, it's just a speech bubble. Yay! Nice. I guess we'll have to fix that so it's not a transparent. Or... Yeah, I'll I'll go in and fix that. Thanks, yeah. Apple. That's fun. Yeah, right. but yeah, I've got um, I spent like I said earlier on the email list. I spent a bit of time earlier this week, uh, tweaking the site design a little bit, getting a menu in place with the podcast RSS, the blog RSS, and the episodes list link and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's at least not a completely embarrassing website design at this point. And it'll it'll start looking better as we fill in more episodes as well and get more categories and, and archives and things like that. So it'll yeah. but but we I think we definitely had a, a successful launch of the podcast. I mean seven hundred and thirty seven listens is not a small feat for for launching uh a brand new podcast. Yeah, I saw it got picked up on a couple feeds on Twitter too. So nice. Yeah, some retweets out of it. And yeah. we and we did it really without much. I mean, we didn't like build any hype ahead of time. Like we we basically yeah. like did the the most lazy launch you possibly could do. So right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah. So that's pretty good for. They probably could have used a bit of a better launch sequence, but. Whatever. Well, but that was kind of the point of this is like none of us have time for like another True. thing. So this is like right. and it's not like it's going to make money for us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe someday we'll see. Eventually. <laughs> Get up and code just made it one year. This is uh, I just finished my one year. Nice. 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 Yeah. Uh, you're probably in like the the second percentile for all all podcasts in terms of length now. Yeah. <laughs> like 80% of podcasts fail before uh, episode 8 and of those that survive another 50% drop off by episode 30. So you're uh, you're definitely up in the in the top 10% at least and probably farther up than that. Yeah. Yeah, and plus I haven't, I haven't missed a week, so Yeah, that's anyway. that's pretty dang amazing. I mean, you should really celebrate that. You need to yeah. start going daily, man. <laughs> that would kill <laughs> Do the me. the John Lee DeMoss thing with the entrepreneur on fire. Spend that, eight hours a day recording podcasts. That would be tough. I mean, even just sending up the interviews or... Yeah. yeah. Even just trying to come up with topics now. I mean, after... 
I mean, that's the thing, like with blogging and everything. I, I'm actually with everything I'm doing right now. I am at the point where I've said all I've got to say. That's yeah. it. I'm done. That's it. I've already <laughs> shared my knowledge. Like uh, you know, <laughs> several hundred blog posts. You yeah, know, found the end of John's brain. That's <laughs> it. What do I? What's the, what else do I got to say? <laughs> so that it, it. But you do hit that point, and then it's really friggin' hard because it's like every time I try to write a blog post now, it's like, man, what the heck do I write about? Like. Yeah. You know, unless I'm working with a new technology or something that's opening new, but as far as like, I have uh, to constantly be doing something new and different as well. That's yeah. That's how I, I get ideas. That's that's one of the reasons that I, I couldn't stay with Telerik any longer than I did is because I wasn't writing code for myself for a product for anything big. I mean, as much as I loved working there and, and loved that company, it just I was stagnating in, in my own ability to produce relevant and valuable content because I wasn't producing anything significant other than blog posts and demo code. So yeah. I just, I, that was, I, 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 if I'm not writing something new, if I'm not building something different, then I'm at a loss. I think that's one of the benefits of doing the whole um, what's the one software development secret that you want to know that I'm doing with my mailing list, just the constant questions that I get help bring me back to things that I do know that I haven't talked about and gets right, yeah. new ideas flowing from there. Or you could say the same thing in a different way. I mean, there's nothing yeah. like yeah. that. You know, or or slightly, you know, slightly, slightly different take on something you've already talked about. Right. Um, yeah, for me, I agree. The, um, the constant reader feedback really is a big source of ideas, and then just reading in general. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you, you've got to have input. Like, if you've got a lot of output, you got to have some input. The more output you, you you produce, the more input you need. He, you, you got to have fresh ideas constantly. Yeah, it's funny too. I mean, even on the reading side, like Josh, like you're saying, Josh, I've read so many of the books that are like the. The entrepreneurial self-help kind of like you know you can do it like overcome your obstacles books that now yep. there's I'm not even getting anything new out of those now yeah. like I've already said everything to, like about those um, so I mean because it's all the same like it's but it's kind of interesting though because it, it's kind of good to know which is like if you read the Think and Grow Rich and the Psycho Cybernetics and the War of Art and the like yeah. all of the and the Seth Godin's books like it's all like really the same message it really is like it's i mean there's different spins on it and there's different points to it but right. it's all pretty much the same same thing so it, it's kind of interesting yeah actually right, so your next assignment then is to pick up some books on cognitive psychology okay <laughs> If, if you really want to get down to, to how people think and how we understand the world and be yeah. able to, to really explain things at that level, that's, that's the direction that you want to go. It's, it's something that I've been interested in in the last, uh, let's see, what is it now, 13 years that I've yeah. been married. So 15 year, 16 years of being with my wife. It's something that I've learned a lot about, and and I swear up and down, left and right, that that's that in itself. Being married to a psychologist who has that kind of knowledge in her brain, and and, and we talk about that kind of stuff on a, a lot. That's yeah. been probably the most beneficial thing to my career of everything that I've ever done, just yeah. because it, it helps me get the right perspective on how to not only think about things, but also how to explain what I'm thinking to other people. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I actually read a book. I mean, I think it falls into the cognitive psychology, the um, uh, thinking fast and thinking slow. I'm yeah, sure. my my wife has that book on her bookshelf. I've been yeah. thinking about picking it up. It, it was it was a really good book. It was a tough read, though. I mean, yeah. that was I wanted. There were points where I definitely wanted to shoot myself in the head, but <laughs> <laughs> but it had great information. I mean, it did have. Yeah. Great because it was like all these all these different experiments and like you know how you would think you would behave but that's not how you would actually behave and how people right that's so. that's a large part of what my wife does she's a, a social psychologist so she doesn't study individual people in a clinical setting or anything but she looks at groups of people in aggregate and and says okay on average you know this many people reacted in this way and this many people did that and you know yeah. everything in aggregate like that so that's that's where I get a lot of a lot of the way I think and the way I talk about software development. It's just from conversations with her. Yep, yep. 
But yeah, yeah, along those lines, I mean, what, what you're saying too about the like doing new things, I haven't really, I mean, I've, I, I'm doing a little bit of consulting right now, right? but I really haven't written code in like, I mean, over six months now, it's like going yeah. crazy. So, I mean, I, I, I want to, and I need to, but I've got so many other projects, like I'm working on that book now that there's yep. no, I just don't have the time for it. So I think my next project after that will be some kind of coding related project. Yep. Oh, oh! Speaking of which, we got we we're, we're kind of um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw the Google Plus. Some guy um, had replied to our podcast recorder, and it's like, I guess these guys are a scam. I haven't heard anything from them. I guess I just lost forty bucks or whatever. <laughs> which I replied back to him and said, No, we're you know we're not. We're 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 working on it. But I think we need to figure out like we're kind of uh, in that uh, zone yeah. of like, uh, are we doing this or not? Yeah. Or like, so I've been, I've been, I have, um, I think I have time right now to work on that. Um, I've been looking at what's going on with watch me code, what's going on with um, my consulting and my ebook and everything else. And, I've got a number of things coming up in the future, mm -hmm. but none of them are going to be a huge time sink right now. Um, and I think I think it would be good for me to start working on on that again. Um, I still like the idea of integrating this into Signal Leaf first, since I have most of the infrastructure in place already, and we can release something faster that way. Um, and do the whole, you know, powered by podcast recorder and all that. Um, so that's that's something that I can probably start working on again uh, next week. Um, I've, there's there's a couple of things I want to do in Signal Leaf as well in terms of simplifying the the pro, the, the editing of um, information, like really really dumb things that I should have done. Like when you put in an image URL for your podcast, have it automatically show the image. Oh, some yeah. things like that because I've had a lot of people put in a Facebook page for their image URL and it's not going to work. <laughs> you, you can't post a Facebook page as your image. <laughs> so I go to their Facebook page and I see, okay, here's the image that they wanted, oh, but I see, it's the yeah. Facebook page for that image. So let me copy the URL and fix it for them. So, but but along along those lines, I think the the podcast recorder is is definitely something. That, that we should be doing, and I think I have time to, to get back on that. I have more time now than I previously had. So. Okay. It, yeah, I mean, if you want to, like, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty uh, busy writing that book, but my next right. deadline, like, I've got a deadline on Monday for one-third of the book, but, uh, or Tuesday, but, uh, but after that, then the next deadline's kind of spaced out a bit, and uh, so, so if if you want to give me some assignments, like if you if you if you want to take point and just tell, like give me some work okay. to do on that, uh, I can I can you know work on that and and uh, you know or we can we can meet and discuss or, or whatever. Yeah, but, totally. But I definitely want to contribute to uh, to it, and I, sh I should have some some time at least to do okay. that. Okay, so. I'll get my head wrapped around this again uh, on Monday. I'm going to spend this afternoon trying to finish up uh, a response to a question from my mailing list, and then uh, we'll we'll start focusing on that on Monday, and get back to. I, uh, we have the demo code that I wrote, and I'll I'll figure out where that is and what actually needs to happen from there, and I'll probably put together a Trello board so that we can track what needs to be done and cool and get, yeah add you guys to that so sounds good. In other news, uh, looks like I'm going to be uh, working with Pragmatic Programmers again to redo my backbone, uh, hands-on backbone JS screencasts, which would be pretty awesome. Updating so I was, uh, so I, I, I debated that. I wanted, I was thinking, okay, should I just update or should I, you know, completely rebuild from the ground up? And I asked them about that, and and the difference really came down to. You know, if you're just updating, then all of the existing buyers are going to get the update for free. And if you're creating more of a second edition or a completely new series, then it's going to be, you know, existing purchasers, 
they might get a discount. I don't know how they would do, how they do that. Sometimes I get discounts on second editions and whatnot, uh, but it would be more of a, a new sales effort thing. And considering how much I've learned in the last three years in working with Backbone, yeah. it's, it's really not just tweaks and updates for a new version of Backbone. It's going to be a, a complete re rewrite from the ground up. It would be like you're tearing the backbone out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Unintended. So, so many jokes. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't get it when people always say, like, uh, okay, in a book, right, like, especially in audiobooks, when they say, uh, no pun intended. What, what do you mean, no pun intended? It went through an editor. Like, right. pun was intended. <laughs> 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 only you can say no pun intended if you're speaking live. That's yeah. the only time you can say that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so along along with that, uh, I'm also talking to them about the possibility of distributing my Backbone Plugins ebook, which for some yeah. reason has been oh. selling really well this week on its own. So I, I, I think... Just going in and publishing an update to the book is is boosting sales. I yeah, think yeah, maybe. People do, yeah, people do look at that date on LeanPub. I've noticed that too. Okay, because because I, I opened up the the book to look at it briefly in order to figure <laughs> out. Period. Republish. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's it's simple things like that. So I, that I noticed yeah. that um, that my profile still said that I work for Telerik. It's like okay, I don't work for Telerik anymore. I'm gonna go edit my profile, make sure that it that it's all up to date, and I republish that, um, and I'm selling more books. I sold six books in one day. I sold three wow. books the next day. I mean, I've I've had a pretty darn good week for book sales. It's it's been quite nice, uh, and and then getting a uh, Craig Prog involved and getting them to distribute the book. I don't know if they're actually going to or not. I, Certainly hope they will. They're going to talk about it like a in week after next, I think they said. So getting that distribution would be pretty awesome, have yeah. some significant income from sales on that. And they're, they're a really good company to work with. I've been super happy with everything that I've, all the interaction that I've had with them in the past with screencasts and whatnot, and I hear really good things about their um, book editing process, which, you know, in my case... I don't need really need it to be to go through all of their processes since the book is done. It's more of just a distribution deal. Yeah. So how, how's your screencast distribution structured with them? Is that like a commission thing, like a percentage of? It's a royalties, yeah. So I get fifty percent of any given sale, which is that's good. That's the, a really it's good the deal. same percentage that they give for authors on books as well, which is unheard of in the publishing yeah. industry. Yeah. I mean, most most publishing places they'll give you like ten percent. Yeah, or less. Oh, yeah, or less. And or and I know one particular author down in Austin working for a very large, uh, write, wrote a book for a very large um, publisher in the tech industry. He got ten percent, which was you know basically the industry standard. But he took an upfront payment of ten thousand yeah. dollars, and he is certain having gone through this before with other publishers, that he will never see a penny over that $10,000. Yep, right. Yeah. It's, it's just the way the, the publishing industry works in general. It's very difficult to make money through these big publishers unless you are a very well-known author. It, it takes a lot of, of effort and a lot of work to, to really make money at that going through traditional publishers, which frankly, is just all the more reason for me to continue using LeanPub to write books yep. and then approach publishers to distribute the book. I mean, yeah. I'm looking at $14,600 in royalties just for me for, mm -hmm. for my Backbone Plugins book, and that doesn't include however much has been paid out to Jerome Nyklet, who wrote one chapter, and doesn't include all of the, the fees that have been taken off yeah. For Lean Pub himself, I mean, there's there's a lot of money changing hands here and and ending up in my pocket. Uh, and and, and you, nice. you know, to be honest, like w with the publishing industry today, like most publishers won't touch you unless you already have an audience, because because they 
I mean, you know, I mean, and obviously, like, it's it's an economics thing, but 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 they want to find someone who already has an audience that right. they'll advertise to that audience because they're not going to do a whole lot of investment in marketing for you. They want you to do the marketing <laughs> to sell your book. To right. so so if you're in that situation, self publishing makes a lot a lot of sense to. I mean, because that's essentially what the publisher is going to do anyway is use your audience. Uh, you know, because they're not going to publish someone who doesn't have an audience. Yeah. So, um, so it's so it's it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it it goes beyond that as well. I, I talked with a, a smaller publisher a couple of years ago about a an idea of, I think it was Ruby for C sharp developers because that's where I was at that point in my career. And when they did the evaluation of the potential market size, they came back with a potential market of like fifty thousand. Uh, uh, developers, which to me sounded amazing. It was like, heck yeah, 50,000. And they're like, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you consider the percentage of people that are going to buy, you'll maybe get five to 10,000 okay. sales. And right. I'm going, yes, five to that. Yeah. <laughs> and they're going, no, it's just not worth our time and money. We're not going to, yeah. we're not going to do that. Like, yeah. Wow. Okay. I've, I've sold 850 copies of my ebook, made fourteen thousand dollars through LeanPub. I'm, thank you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. I, did, I, I, did, I never wrote that book, but it's just yeah. it's it's really interesting to see the differences between larger publishers that have huge audiences and the budgets they work with and the audience sizes that they need versus something like LeanPub, where yeah. Well, it's it's distribution channels, right? I mean, it's like like for me, like why did I decide to do my book with Manning? Well, I mean, I was just talking to Josh about this. It's like they, I, I when they first approached me to do a book, I wasn't going to do a book on a specific technology that right. was because I know that I'm not going to make any money on that, and I know that it's gonna, you know, I don't want to necessarily like build my reputation in a specific technology. I mean, I'm not going to write that C plus plus book. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, but 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 uh, you know, for my book, I figured you know I could self-publish it, but I w I am interested in their distribution channel because my book is about applies to all developers, yeah. and so it has a very wide. I mean, like my target yeah. audience is huge, and their distribution network of all the different technologies that they have sold books on that they're right. going to advertise to is in my case big it's not like i'm trying to reach a niche i'm trying to reach the whole so it, so in that case i mean it's like it's still a small chance like it's like yeah i you know the advance i got paid maybe i'll make a, i expect to make a little bit above it i do expect to break the advance on this book right. but um but there's a small small like chance that this book could hit a home run and i could pull in you know huge numbers yep. uh you know it it just it just depends like cuz cuz it because it's such a why but that's the only reason you know i guess the only the only two factors for me was a small chance like on my own selling the book i would i would never have that chance right. uh, because i could only reach my audience um, so there is that small, small chance, and then just the the idea of like once I'm once I'm published through a traditional publisher, then it kind of is like a it's kind of like a status thing. It kind of is a reputation thing that that can yeah. kind of help. Like if you get at least one book published, then you know right. it, you know it, it makes it makes a difference. Like you can say, okay, yeah, well it, I have a book on a bookshelf, yeah. like you know. On a book that's, store, the, that's, those are largely the the reasons that I'm choosing to go with Prag Prog again for my backbone screencast. I mean, that, yeah. I've had a lot of people ask me to do a, a Watch Me Code series on Backbone, and I could do it really quickly. Yeah, you know, it's it's it wouldn't take that much effort for me to to do the 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 ten minute episodes. I could record three or four of them a week and have an amazing series, but. The audience size that Prag Prog has and my past history with them shows me one, it's going to be more profitable for me. Yeah. And two, it's going to be more valuable for me in my career to work with them again because it's going to put my name out there in front of a larger audience that has, you know, more interests outside of just the, the the things that I've already done and written about and, and, and built screencasts on. It's it's going to be better overall 
for everything else that I do. It's it's probably going to be a huge boost to watch me code subscriptions, quite honestly. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Yep. Cuz it'll it'll be, you know, hey, look at this awesome stuff that this guy did for this company and here's the other screencast that he does. Go subscribe there. Yep. Can you you, you can know? plug your stuff in the in the videos? Um, I don't know about that specifically, um, but I have a profile for an author profile and I'll be able to I'll get links through there. Nice. Uh, yeah. But in terms of plugging, like the the last series I did for him, I did a lot of stuff with Marionette. You know, I mean it's it's an add-on on top of framework on, on top of Backbone, so it, it made sense for me to to use Marionette in order to reduce duplication and whatnot. And that was one way that Marionette got such a huge following so quickly is I was able to to promote it through Pragmatic Press or Pragmatic Programmers screencast that I did for them. Yeah. And so that that helped a lot when in in delivering value to to people and getting that the value that it provides in front of people. So there's there, there's going to be some cross promotion there. I'm certainly going to advertise those screencasts on Watch Me Code again. You know, I won't be able to give people discounts or or give them the episodes for free unfortunately, which I know is going to piss off a lot of people, but from from my perspective, it's it's the better decision for for me as an entrepreneur and as someone producing screencasts on my own, it makes more sense for me to to get that attention and get that publishing deal. Yeah, yeah, it's good because you're getting a bigger distribution. You're getting your name out right. in more places than I mean, you. Yeah, so uh, it makes sense to me for sure. Speaking of getting of 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 getting wide public distribution, it's my turn to cry the blues, <laughs> man. <laughs> Yesterday should have been an awesome day. I got I, my .dot net rocks episode came out, and my freelancers podcast oh, episode man. came out. Both came out same day, right? And uh, and and I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like the .dot net rocks episode. I like. I I felt like both of them. I pretty much nailed it. Like I I felt. I listened to both episodes. I was like, this sounds good. This is like this is how I want to sound. Right. Um, and uh, and like on .dot net rocks, if you go and you look at the uh, at their page now, like my episode has more comments than any episode I think ever. Like I mean, <laughs> it's day two. Like there's 17 comments, and I haven't added one yet uh, on that already. You know, I'm doing the giveaway, but um, but but yeah, I mean, it's it's gotten a, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of good feedback, but uh, no sales. Like, well, I don't want to say no sales because I had two sales come in, but they're full price sales, so they weren't discounts. So so that either means someone listened to the episode and and bought it and didn't get the discount code at the end, so they didn't listen to the very end, or they. They just wanted to give me extra hundred bucks, or, or they, or they, or more likely they didn't, or they might not have come in through the podcast. Either way, like yeah. the kind of distribution that they have, I mean, uh, I'm guessing .NET Rocks must have what per episode like ten thousand listeners. Oh or? no, it's it's well up in the hundred hundreds of thousands of listeners per episode. Okay, so the yeah, so then I I don't know the exact numbers, but I, I talked to to Carl about this. Um, yeah. Six months ago, eight months ago, um, oddly enough, when we were in Bulgaria for a conference, I, I got to sit next to him at a dinner, and we were talking about this and, and talking about sponsorships, and he never mentioned any numbers specifically, but he gave me general ballparks for the, the types, for the number of listens and the the cost of sponsorships for their episodes and, and whatnot, and it's... They they have to be pulling in hundreds of thousands of listens per episode based on the numbers that he was ballparking for sponsorships. There's no way they could be asking for okay. that without doing that. Well, I mean, essentially, I got a whole episode dedicated to yeah. my my product, right? To spo I, essentially a whole episode sponsorship, right? Right, right. So that's got one giant advertisement. <laughs> so, so I mean, I would expect like you know. 40, 50 sales from that. Like that. I would expect a very long tail on it, though. Yeah, and and you know it's weird. Like I've gotten, I probably got a uh, hundred email signups in the last day. Yeah. Um, for my like from the pop up for my how to market yourself course, but not the sales. So I don't know. I mean they're they're still in my email funnel to get the the letters and and maybe it's so many people are holding off because of the. The contest thing, but then there's only 17 comments, so I don't know. I, I just 
I can't figure it out. Like when when I was on the Polymorphic podcast, which had a much lower distribution, it was uh, I, I I saw like three or four sales come in from there. Yeah. So I don't know. It, I, sales have just not been been doing been doing good ever since I cut the hundred dollars off of my discount. At first, it was like I was getting some full price sales, and now yeah, I don't know. It's not it's not looking too good. And with those two podcasts, I'm I'm really uh, disappointed that I. I I mean, I, I should see, be seeing sales rolling in, I would think, right now. But I, I felt the same way about Watch Me Code sponsorships. You know, I, I had two weeks worth of Web Tools weekly sponsorships, and I made a couple of subscriptions. And I had uh, my um, JS Jabber sponsorship startup, and I made a couple of subscriptions. And it was just kind of okay. This wasn't worth my time and money. This was terrible. I, I'm not getting any real response out of this. But then this week, I mean, let me pull up the the numbers real quick. Something this week clicked in somebody's brain somewhere, <laughs> and I ended up with um, where's my report this week? Filter. Oops, wrong report. This week, filter. I ended up with 19 subscriptions Whoa. this week. Oh wow, that's nice. nice. Yeah, that's that's like four a day. <laughs> at full price, or that's a discounted? discounted some of them price. were full price, and nice. some of them, most of them were discounts, which I totally expect. Um, I I got some, a, a couple of Web Tools Weekly. Um, I mostly um, from um, from a, a, well, a couple from JS Jabber. Actually, I do. I, I remember what it was now, and thinking about the discounts, the, the discount codes, the discount codes that were being used. So I did something a little bit shady um, okay. when when I went and updated my ebook to correct my profile. I was like, "Huh, there's a whole bunch of people that you know, 850 people that that have my my book here. I wonder if any of them would be interested in screencasts." And I wonder if any future purchasers would be interested in screencasts. So I added a, a section at the very end of the book, a special a special offer from Derek Bailey, and it's basically just one giant advertisement, a, a nice. one page advertisement for Watch Me Code with yeah. a discount code to get you nine bucks a month uh, from from having bought the book. So I I mentioned okay, I've mentioned these screencasts in the book a number of times, and there's a whole lot more available for you here, and you can go get. The subscription with this discount, and and I I got a good number of people subscribing from that. So in addition to adding that to the end of the book, I emailed the 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 all of my buyers directly from LeanPub and said, Hey guys, thanks for buying the book. Here's a discount code for my Watch Me Code subscriptions, and and got a good number of subscribers from that. Well, that's smart. Yeah, I like it. I I wouldn't really call it shady. It's this. That's good. <laughs> That's called cross promotion, man. That's not. Yeah. Shady. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll call it cross promotion then. <laughs> or upselling, either way. Yeah. Yeah. See that upselling. That's that's oh, the. Yeah. That's why I call it shady because I had a guy, re uh, refund my my book specifically getting pissed off at me upselling him on oh, on, on screencasts. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like. Come on, guy. I, I gave you all of this information. I gave you years worth of knowledge packed into this book, yeah. and you're complaining that I'm not taking another chapter worth of time to explain, you know, object-oriented design and JavaScript, and instead suggesting a place where you can get that information. Yeah. <laughs> I, quick little anecdote here. So, um, on the itty biz list, list, um, one of the. Uh, one of the anecdotes they told was – this was hilarious. So they, they had a book that I bought, actually. It was a $97 book about launching your ebook. And um, so it was one – I think it was one of the first first projects they did. Um, and so they were finishing it up, and they were like, you know what? They're getting ready to launch. They are like, you know what? We really need an upsell for this. <laughs> what can we do? And, and they were like, well, we have an ebook about ebooks, so let's do an upsell about upsells. And they did. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's was, that was pretty awesome. That's good. Yeah, I um, uh, I was listening to I could, I forget who it was. It might have been that one Ryan Deese guy that I sent to you guys. Uh -huh. the yeah. Funnel. Um, 
which is he's kind of borderline on the shady part because he <laughs> yeah. that's screencast and he's like, This will not be recorded. Never gonna record this shit. No way. No way. <laughs> and then and then the next day on Facebook I get an advertisement from him. Check out this recorded <laughs> if you missed it, now we recorded it. <laughs> so they lost a little bit of credibility there for me, but um a little bit. Anyway, he said that you should upsell and upsell and upsell until someone stops buying. At least I think it was it was him who said it. So it's like, what, like you need to have a continual chain. Like you you make your you sell your thing and then you offer an upsell. And then if they take the upsell, then you offer them another upsell. And then if they take, you keep on doing it as long as they want to keep on buying. And when they re when they reject one, then you're done. But um, but but that kind of made a lot of sense too. I was like, oh, that's that's interesting. Like you should have like a series of a chain of things that you can continually upsell because if someone's wanting to buy all your stuff, maybe they want to buy everything that you have. That yeah, you there buy. there are people like that out there. I've got a few raving fans of Watch Me Code. People that were begging me to to get access before anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've had I've had people. I, I've handed discount codes to people like, here, dude, have this discount code, and they're like, thanks, dude, I'll pay full price. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna complain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that does make it hard. Like with my book launches, I've noticed that too. Like I, some of the people that were paying, like I had one person pay fifty dollars for my first book, wow. which was selling for nineteen dollars at the time. I mean, I had somebody give me a hundred dollars for mine. It's, it's 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 so it makes it hard to track. I mean, it's like yeah. awesome, more money, but you know, right. it's hard to track with the discount codes. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, I'm I'm definitely at I'm I'm at this point where I'm like, man, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. I'm. S <laughs> it's, yeah. All right, all right. So here here it says I I was wanting to do this, so I'm gonna do it. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Here's here's what I'm proposing for this week. Um, we all swear off our stats, or maybe we well, we pick one stat to uh -huh. monitor and try to improve that. We don't look at anything else, because I realized earlier this week. So I, I do this periodically where I just go, you know, I just go black on all my stats. I just don't even look at them. Okay. Yeah. Nothing about them just puts me in a bad mood usually, even if they're improving. Mm -hmm. and they're not improving as fast as I want. So, right. So I haven't looked at my sales. I, I turned off all my notification emails for my sales, which I can't do it 100% because the bundles from LeanPub, uh -huh. I still get yeah. those. Those, But those are kind of like, it, when you know that the picture's not complete, seeing one or two come in doesn't really phase me. It's like right. when I know, you know, when I know that I didn't get any, like I got no sales on Saturday or Sunday. And I was so bummed again. Yeah. So I am. Um, so I I, ha I have no idea how many books I've sold this week. Right. I know I've sold a few because I've gotten some bundle notifications. Um, but I'm gonna focus on. I think I'm gonna probably focus on uh, on email subscribers this week. And I'm gonna like double down on my. Uh, I'm gonna like double and triple down on my uh, my advertising on Twitter. Yeah. And then evaluate what that did to my sales after a week. And meanwhile, I don't I don't know, so I don't have to be stressing about it. Yeah, I'm. I, I love the idea of turning off stats. I'm actually going through and disabling a bunch of my emails while you're talking. But <laughs> the the Twitter thing. Sorry, let's let, let's let's finish the the discussion on. Disabling stats first, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really like that idea. That's that's something that yeah. I created in my my Signal Leaf blog post about um, four things you need to stop doing yeah. with your to with, with your podcast. So stop looking at the stats, and I I think that I definitely get obsessed with the stats. I I have you know, Google Analytics open right now. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. I'm, yeah. I'm looking at the 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 real-time stats of how many people are on Watch Me Code. And, and I, I have LeanPub pulled open, and I'm looking at my royalties and my number of sales. And, you know, I constantly have all these stupid stats open, and it does, not only does it weigh you down, but it's a constant distraction away from doing things that actually are productive. It's, it's the whole thing about, you know, don't confuse activity with productivity and yeah looking at stats is certainly an active thing to do but it's not productive well and then there's like a, i guess there's another point to it too which is that whole like 
you know, you make a plan and then you execute the plan. Like yep. you can't second guess. Like right. you decide what you're going, your course of action is going to be, and then you have to carry it out to the end. And like when you're checking right. things in the middle, you're like, you start you to lose motivation. Data. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, yeah, you're not you're, you. You yeah. kind of maybe crap out and not do the thing that you yep. plan yep. to do because the stats are showing you that it's not working. But it, it's it's too late. You commit like you, you don't make judgment calls while you're in worker bee mode. You work. Right. right. So. Right. Yep. Man, that's gonna be hard though, because like I've got my stat. My I have a whole monitor <laughs> dedicated to my stats. <laughs> what whole monitor? It? Just you're just gonna have to turn the monitor off. <laughs> Good yeah. job. Yeah, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a challenge if it was easy though. You know. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. I agree with you. I think we should. I gotta unsubscribe all my DPD emails, which there's none coming in anyway. So. Yeah. Who's there, so. <laughs> Maybe so you yeah, leave for, that one turned on. <laughs> for me, when I was working on my second book, I did this actually, and I left. I just left everything off yeah. for a long time, and it was really nice. Like, I, I've been lately. I got got back into it because I've been do, focusing so much on tweaking, like just really learning getting my marketing funnel better, you know, in better shape. And so yeah. I convinced myself that it was important to know whether what I was doing was working. Yeah. Which is true to an extent, but I think like doing it checking things once a week. What I'm planning to do right now is to do like a once a week check up like on Saturday. Um yeah. just kind of cruise through and, and calculate like I'm basically on the ads, like I am basically planning to Look at my look at my numbers. How much money did I spend on ads? Okay, did I make more in books? Okay, increase my budget. <laughs> like I'm, you yeah. know, I'm gonna see how far I can push that. Yeah. Uh, until like to the point where I might, you know, might not be. I might be breaking even. I'm gonna see if I can push it to a break even point. Right. You know, in terms of sales. And that that kind of makes sense. Like from a like, you know, when it, when you think about it, like it, it's obviously good to have really detailed tracking data to know, mm -hmm. but. But there's also like the brute force approach like that, which is just, yeah. I mean, it requires less computation, less thinking, less uh, work. And and at some point you might need more finesse, to, right. but it, but you, I guess you might as well do the brute force as long as you can get away with it and, yeah. then, and then finesse it a little bit more later when you need more detail. But if that's working, like if you can just keep on throwing more money at it and it generates you more money, then, then I guess yeah. really, who who cares uh, what, what the you know if you if you can optimize it, sure. But right. but it, but if you, if if as long as you can keep on throwing more money and getting more money, then there's no point in optimizing any further. Yeah, I, I've taken the Vietnam approach, which is like the the really tentative, you know, I'll dip my toe in the water, you know, <laughs> yeah. and and not really commit to it. Um, and that's kind of that's that's what I've been doing with the advertising. And so I want to go. I'm gonna just go all in. Yeah. And see, you know. If I'm, I might spend 40 bucks, 40, 50 bucks a day on ads here for a little while, get people in onto my list. Um, I also realized last weekend, I realized part of the reason why I think I haven't been seeing immediate impacts from the say, from the, uh, the, the the ads is I wasn't sending because of Mailchimp, <laughs> our favorite whipping boy lately. Um, yeah. I, I didn't have my autoresponders set up to go. Like, there's not a good way to manage autoresponders. For people coming into your list, like it's a pain in the butt. Yeah. I want to have different autoresponders for different groups and stuff, but I can't. That's why I'm paying for lead pages because I can't do that easily in Mailchimp. But I had turned off the import option on on my uh, autoresponder that sends out my, the sample ebook when I, when somebody subscribes. So oh, yeah. the 20 people I was signing up every day weren't getting oh no ebook yeah. Uh, Example because that so you're is, pissing them off. <laughs> yeah, so that's an import. Like when they come in yeah. through the API, which is with how Twitter works, and lead lead pages too. Um, they, you know, that's an import, and oh, it's so frustrating in Mailchimp. You can't see. There's not really a good way to see how many subscribers you're even adding day to day. Yeah, that's been driving me nuts from the import yeah. as well. Just, I I turned on an email like I, you they can they'll send you a daily. I, email that's summary, what I get. Yeah. And I have that, which is funny because they'll be like, well, it'll tell me, but it only rep that's maddening because it only reports people that sign up through my pop up. It does not report right. uh, the imports. Imports. So, which is the bulk of my subscribers. So it'll be like. Eight signups, 35 unsubscribes because I'm yep. emailing every day. <laughs> yeah, I, I, last month I had 230 people join my mailing list, and MailChimp reports like seven. 
Yeah. Because it was all yeah. lead pages, the, the lead boxes feature from lead. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You've got, yep, because you don't have a pop-up. Yeah. Thing, so. I, I, I just, really like that lead pages, lead boxes thing. That, yes. it's, oh. that has totally been worth paying for lead pages yes. right there. The, the other thing I'm going to gonna eventually use is um, the, the lead links. I forget what, I think they're called lead links. Where yeah, you can lead embed, links. Yeah, put it in the in, email. In your yeah. email, you can embed one a sign-up link, a one-click right. sign-up link. So when I go to launch my next product... Yeah, I'm going to do that to create a sub-list for I it. don't have access to that feature. I didn't pay for the pro, the, oh, the, yeah. the top end of lead pages. Because I really only wanted the, the lead boxes. Frankly, I would like to pay less just to have lead boxes and not have anything else. Mm. <laughs> but they don't, they don't offer that. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't understand why, why don't they just have a simple stat on MailChimp that says how many people subscribe today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, yeah. That's all so simple. Like, just yeah. what is the change in the list? Just tell me, you know, what is the change? <laughs> once again, once again, that's a stat that we are going to ignore this week. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we could create a product that does that pretty easily. I guess actually, actually, you know what? Maybe we should create like just a little, a little cross-platform iOS Android app. All it friggin' does is t keep track of your Mailchimp list number and tells you. Plus five, minus two, whatever it is. <laughs> day to day, you know? yeah. Not even how many subscribe, just your net change. Yeah. That's all I freaking yeah. care about is what was my net change right. yep. every day. Yep. I bet I bet you could sell that app for five bucks and, and you would get plenty of people that would buy it. Yeah. So there's so your next coding project, John. <laughs> <laughs> So, so my uh, my meeting with the Twitter rep was great this week. So he's got me on a. <laughs> this is actually pretty shrewd, Derek. I don't know if they did this to you, but he's got me on this little hamster wheel where he he convinces me to run more campaigns every yep. time he talks to me, and then he schedules a follow up. So yep. I feel accountable. It's a really uh, it's a really yeah. good model that they have. So yeah, no, you know, that's, I, I, it's like I want to impress this guy. I'm like I don't know why. <laughs> I my, like, my rep did exactly the same yep, thing, and yep. I. I was I, I was too busy to do it. I was like, yeah. I I really want to do these things. These ideas are great, but dang it, I don't have time. Yeah. So so, so I took two pages of notes off of this. This is this oh, is wow. well, so so this was great. He started off. He looked at my campaign. So I've been doing. Two, I did two campaigns over the last week. I did um, a lead gen campaign, which is the one click subscribe, mm -hmm. uh, and that's that one has gone phenomenally well. I was getting like a twelve percent engagement rate on that ad, which is Crazy, including uh, Tim Pope's email. Yeah. <laughs> Outrage on Twitter, which was hilarious. I wrote a, I wrote a, I queued up a, an email about to my list about that. I don't I even don't understand it. I missed that. I didn't, I didn't quite get it. So Tim Pope, it, Tim Pope is like Mr. Vim. He is Mr. Like, Vim. Oh, okay. The, okay. Like ninety percent of the Vim plugins that I use are Tim Pope. Yeah. Yeah. He's so, written tons. I've, I've used his plugins, and they're good. He's and really he's, good. You know, he's he's really he's really well known. And uh, so, yeah, my, my tweet popped up in his timeline. <laughs> and, and what did your tweet say? It was like some it, it, it was, like, it was like It was like sign up for my newsletter um, and yeah, get, get pages get of free tips. Yeah, get on Sublime. Yeah, yeah okay. That's basically what, what I said. What I and he was like, what yeah. is this? Bullshit. <laughs> so, so he just irate that there's another text editor besides Vim, right? Is yeah, I think so. Basically, okay. yeah. He's and just, it, he's just offended that Sublime Text exists. Okay, no, okay, that okay. I guess I do get it. It's then. Pretty okay. Funny. That is. I mean, I, I freaking love his his plugins. Honestly, yeah, I, yeah. I use his his uh, pathogen to to load up all of oh, yeah. his yep. plugins for syntax highlighting and everything else. Yep. It's yep. brilliant work. I can't live yeah. without it. It's yeah, just but it's, really, really funny to see him say something like that. Yeah. So I wrote an email to my list off of that. I just I quoted his tweet at the top. Like that's the first thing you read mm -hmm. you know, when you open the email. And then nice. I basically from there I went I, mean, I told the story of of how it how that you know where that quote came from and what. Right. And then I said you know you know what this is ridiculous. The editor wars are fun, but you know what it's silly. Use them all. Learn from them all. You'll learn something about your own text editor if you play with them. Right. Now, if you're a Sublime fan and you play with Vim, you'll learn how to use Vim commands, and then you can use them in Sublime with the Vintage plugin. Emacs has some really cool stuff. Um, you know, they're all they're all amazing. So you know, don't get, don't get your panties in a wad, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that was funny. But uh, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, so that that tweet has done really really well. 
um, or that campaign's done really well. I also tried the website cards um, tweet, which did not work as well. I got I got like less than three percent engagement, and yeah. people were clicking on it, but they weren't converting all that well on the lead pages. So it, it was costing me more. So I've pulled the plug on that one completely. How big is your target audience on your like? So yeah, so this is one thing I learned. So he suggested a the range bigger, of the one. Better. No, huh? one. No? He's he's actually suggesting smaller focused audiences. Um, really? He said one to one a uh, thousand to um, hundred thousand to three hundred thousand is a good range to shoot for. Okay. Really interesting. And, okay. Yeah, he suggested creating small, uh, small, very focused audiences and running multiple campaigns. So, you know, you might like take take uh, Ruby developers or you know Rails developers, mm -hmm. target a bunch of accounts they'd be interested in and then create tweets specifically for them and have a campaign you know that targets just them he said like code camps are another really good one yeah um, yeah that all makes else. sense that's that yeah. I mean, that's just the marketing toward your your specific target right. that's that's pretty yeah. basic marketing yep. and he said to keep um to well you can like group you can kind of group accounts like thought leaders, like I have just kind of a mishmash of stuff thrown in there, like mm -hmm. companies, other text editors, you know, just whatever whatever popped up. And he, he was suggesting to kind of group them a little bit more. So like thought leaders might be one, right. languages, um, competitors, that type of thing. So you can get a better idea of where your best ROI is and, and then focus on that. So that was right. pretty cool. But he looked at my campaign and kind of started laughing and told me I was in the 100th percentile. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. You're getting 12 percent on the on that that sign up. Yeah, 12 percent, and I was paying like three insane. cents per engagement. So, yeah, I it, mean, he's I, like, I, you, he's like, you don't expect to get this lower than that. And I was like, no, I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> so, yeah, um, sounds like you just need to dump money into that thing. Like, that's exactly what he was all saying. All your money, which, like, go mortgage your house. Twitter, you'd expect a Twitter <laughs> ad rep to say that, but yeah, he was like, dude, this is about the best campaign I've seen in a long time. So. Just ride this because you know it, it'll stop working at some point, probably. Right. Yeah. But um, he said, you know, I, I if I were you, I'd put as much as I could into this right now because it's working. Yeah. Um. So that was cool. Um. Uh. So I'm I'm gonna try two new campaigns this week. I'm gonna try another. Um. We talked about some ways I could try the promoted accounts tweet or the pr promoted accounts approach again. And get yeah. that. If I can get that cost per follow down to around ten cents, I would do that too. Because um, those are, you know, I wouldn't want to pay more than that for a Twitter follower, but that's pretty. That that is pretty useful. Like if you have twenty thousand followers, that's like an instant. I have like twelve twelve thousand now. Anytime I tweet anything, I get like two two hundred to two hundred fifty hits immediately. Mm -hmm. It's like instant yeah. traffic. So you know, I can if I could double my following, then. You know, that could drive 500 hits on a single, on a single tweet. You know, that's pretty, that's useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can convert a lot of those people to newsletter sub subscribers. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to try that this week, um, to see see how that plays out. But yeah, I'm 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 pretty happy with how that's working out. And I I think I was I think I've sold more books this week because before I pulled the plug on my stats, I noticed I was noticing an uptick. In books now that my email is actually going out. <laughs> yeah. So the, yeah. The I promise people. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah. So that's so gonna be. I'm gonna do that I this weekend. Uh, yeah, I'm doing that this weekend. Then I'm also gonna do. Uh, I upgraded my um, uh, Plugio subscription to let me do the bulk bulk tweeting. So I'm gonna have a spreadsheet with all like with like a month worth of tweets in it, two or three yeah. a day. And I'm just gonna upload that like every month. I'll just upload it once. Mm -hmm. I'll just go out, you know, at, at scheduled intervals. So, yeah, some, I'm just all in on Twitter at this point. <laughs> it's, it's working <laughs> well, really that's, well. Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah, just dump money into that ad and see what what result you get. I mean, yep. it's not gonna be a waste. So, yeah. and oh, I, speaking, I, of, I have, speaking of Twitter, have you guys seen the the new profiles with the pinned tweet? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I have I've a got... tweet for my newsletter. At the yeah, top. so what I did with, um, with, I think it was, I can't remember if it was my account or Watch Me Code. Um, I did my my I did a Twitter card for advertising Watch Me Code with you know my nice ad design that I'm I'm using everywhere, 
and I tweeted that and yep. then pinned that tweet to to my account. It's driven yep. quite a bit of traffic, actually. Yep. So yeah, those, I those pin tweets to... are a good idea. I'd recommend, especially if you've got a Twitter ads account set up, get a, a, a Twitter card set okay. up that you can tweet and pin because those Twitter cards tend to do pretty well for mm -hmm. for driving traffic. Use the lead gen card. The lead gen card? Well, that's yeah, I mean, you, you, yeah. The, the email subscriber card. Oh, right, yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Because I've been I've been yeah. using a website card to just to get people onto the Watch Me Code site, but I should totally do that. Yeah, because you'll get. I mean, what I've been getting is I've been getting, I've been getting a lot. I've actually been getting followers <coughs> off of that too. A crazy number of followers. Like, uh, I think I, I forget. Let me look at it real quick. Um, I had gotten two hundred and seven. Well, that's that's no, one hundred and fifty-five. Uh, followers and 93 email signups from basically 60 bucks, $55. Wow. Oh, yeah, so, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. So what that this experiment has proved to me is that you can actually get the. This is only targeting U.S. too, by the way. So mm -hmm. that was what that was like. I wasn't convinced that you could do U.S. for anything less than like 50 cents, because that was what I'd seen. But I've, if you can get it, yeah. If you can I, get I've it had some well. some campaigns, just regular Twitter ad campaigns targeted at the U.S. where I've seen three or four cents. Okay. Yeah. That's, I don't. That's I don't think it's the region. I mean, they they the Twitter ads people keep saying that the U.S. tends to be more expensive, and mm -hmm. if you consider you know five, ten, fifteen cents more expensive than two or three cents, then yeah. Yeah. But still, it's yeah, not it'd that bad. It'd be a lot hmm. better. So, yep. So that's pretty much. I'm pretty much focused on. I'm gonna work on that this weekend, and then also I've really got to get my um, sales page updated and working yeah. better because it's not, it's not performing well at all. And I think, I think just getting that. I honestly think it, it's converting at less than one percent right now. Um, I think that I was using the same. I was using the same copy on LeanPub. But I think I was just benefiting from all of their optimizations, which was my original fear about going off of LeanPub, trying to sell direct. Right. Was I, I knew that they'd optimize those sales pages pretty heavily, so I figured right. I'd probably suffer, <laughs> and I have. I actually realized this week that part of the reason why my sales have dropped off is because I've been just sending so much traffic to that sales page instead of LeanPub. Mm -hmm. Like the last two months have been, you know, like we, I cut that over in like whenever, it was March, I think, and I did my launch right after that, so it masked everything, and then basically April, April, May, um, have, I've been sending traffic only to my sales page. Well, you know, it's interesting too about that, right? So, okay, I mean, so LeanPub, your sales page, same copy, right? Right. Different formatting, yes, mm -hmm. but also I wonder the LeanPub name, which carries some authority, right? Some credibility yeah. with it. Right. Um, maybe that's what the difference. Because I can't imagine that the. I mean, if you have the same exact copy, I cannot imagine that the layout would make that much of a difference. I know it makes some somewhat of a difference. I, I can imagine yeah. that, but 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 it, it's got to be. I, I wonder if maybe what you need is more like social proof or more some kind of credibility. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you could it's, say, yeah. like, as seen on LeanPub or, like... <laughs> it, <laughs> I need a logo. Is, I, I like read the Wall Street logo. Journal. There, yeah. there's, there's a huge draw. Some of in, my favorite big companies, <laughs> Apple. <laughs> their logo. <laughs> I love these companies. Yeah, I put a bunch of logos. Nice. Well, Benjamin yeah. Franklin. <laughs> 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 but the, I, I think there real there there is something to LeanPub. If, if I see a book on LeanPub, I'm totally willing to buy it. I'll just oh yeah, LeanPub. Okay, let me go buy this. I mean, it's you, yeah. People get used to buying stuff on LeanPub because they know it's safe, it's easy, it's effective. You get updates. You know, there's there's a lot of ingrained comfort in in buying stuff from LeanPub. And interesting. Yeah. And I I think one of the reasons I'm selling so well with with my book is because I'm still using LeanPub to sell. I've got my sales yeah, page, but that's not which apparent is a great sales page. Through. Right, but how if if you looked at your uh, shopping cart abandon rate, you it's know what's your high. 
Really? I mean, my, my abandonment rate is, uh, my completion rate is like 75%. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah. So what it's not, like? yeah. So it's not, um, I don't think that's the problem. Interesting. But. Maybe you really just need a better layout then. More. <laughs> well, I think it's not the layout. It's, I think it needs, I mean, it needs a lot of stuff. Like, it's not, um, I mean, the headlines, the headline's terrible. Uh, uh, I think what I need to do is get the and I actually left the terrible headline on purpose because I wanted to make sure it was terrible, and yeah. it confirmed that. Um, well, there you go. Yep, there I well, go. There's um, <laughs> <laughs> I there's your problem. I can make you any kind of shitty headline you want. Just yeah, seriously, <laughs> yeah, I'll do this that for you. This sucks. Don't buy it. <laughs> I mean, I can... uh, so I need I need test I have some test I need to put testimonials on there. Yeah. I'm actually going to basically rip out all the copy and just go with a uh, one of the things. I've seen some really good ads lately um, from the copy hour thing I've been doing where it's like basically just an entire, the entire thing is just bullet points yeah. of stuff that's in the book. And I think I'm actually going to take a pretty simple approach like that. Just write a bunch of curiosity provoking bullet points, then have like my photo, um, a little bit about me, uh, then a bunch of social proof. Like I've got some testimonials and stuff to add. Mm. Um, I think I think oh and I should probably mention what formats it comes in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like uh, that kind of thing. So yeah, there's a ton, there's a ton of work to do on that page. It's pretty awful. Yeah. Well, split test it and see. I mean. Yeah. That's the, once you, especially when you revamp the page, split test it against your old one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Make sure. Yeah, my, I've got my tracking. I think I've actually got the tracking thing more or less worked out now. Um. So with LeanPub, I'm getting pretty good data off of the goals that I have set up um, just based on the thank you page. The only thing I lose with that is the um, the bundles, which is kind of unfortunate because lots of people buy my bundles, and I don't get to see where those people are coming from. But I am seeing – I definitely am seeing a nice chunk of sales coming from the, the emails that I'm doing. Um, and then DPD actually is – the e-commerce plugin thing was actually working better than I realized. Uh, it sometimes picks up PayPal and, and wants to tell you that they came from PayPal, but there's a way to ignore that. So I, I did that, and I'm hoping that that will give me, you know, show me where people are actually coming from now. So, so got some tracking in place. But. Cool. I still fail miserably at all of this marketing stuff. I, it, you, you guys constantly talk about all these experiments that you guys that you're doing and all the tracking that you're setting up, and I'm like, <sighs> but you're selling stuff, so hey, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm doing something right, but I think it's more dumb luck and sheer force of will than any <laughs> valid strategy. I, I I swear, one of these Fridays, we're gonna we're gonna get on the podcast here. And you guys are going to talk about how many hundreds of thousands of dollars you made this week. And I'm going to be like, yep, I sold 15 books. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm starting to think, like, after this, I'm like, man, are, is my sales page actually working against me? Is my, like, is my sales page so bad that it's actually people are buying the product? That, like, I'm convincing people to buy the product before they go to the sales page, and that's the people who are buying it. And then when they go to, and then some people that are on the fence, they go to the sales page and they're like, "Hell no, I'm not buying that crap," <laughs> right? Like, you know, I don't know, I don't know. Like, it's, I don't know. So that's what, that's what I'm starting to suspect now. But well, you should just split test it against the page with a big buy button. Yeah, just <laughs> that's a good idea, actually. Just, just show, show the big the the spread. Yeah. yeah. Just, and just buy now. And, and yeah. well, I mean, like bullets or something that just yeah. says, yeah. And yeah. Then. You'll, get, you'll get the 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 spread with the content list and the buy now button. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's so a really good try, idea. That's a good idea. Just to try like a sim, really simple, like strip out, strip out most of it. You know, you're gonna need a little bit. I mean, that's a slight exaggeration, yeah. but you're gonna need a little bit. But strip it Why down. Why is that a slight really exaggeration? Different. If if you really wanna wanna figure out the minimum amount that you need to sell. Set up a page with just the image, the bullet list of contents, and the buy button, and then a second page that adds a little bit more, and a second page that adds a little bit more, and, and just build little pages like that. I mean, See which one, yeah. 
Send send different people to different pages and see, see which one sells. I gotta sign up for an Optimizely account or a Visual Web Optimizer yeah. account so I can do this because you could do it with Google Analytics, but it's a real pain in the butt. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I've heard. Um, okay, yeah, I, I gotta do that. I don't have time. This is the thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm I don't have time for any book. of these great ideas that I'm coming up with. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and you know I'm what? I'm an idea machine, but you guys go do it because I'm busy. <laughs> I just heard back from that Jeremy Reeves guy. He he's like booked out. He just got this deal for the next three months, so he just emailed me and he's like, "These are the options I can give you. Like, I can either um, I either I can give you the coaching, or you, I can refer you to another writer, or you can like look at my uh, you can buy one of my products at." kind of explains what to do so yeah. I don't know it's like the thing is like I would totally pay him for the coaching but I just don't have the time to yeah implement the thing and and I'm tempted I mean I would love to actually implement it myself I mean it uh, but I don't have the time I don't know I guess I guess I don't know I mean the, the other thing is like does it really matter like if I if I sit on this for three months while I'm finished yeah. writing this book and then I take action I guess it doesn't matter that much I, I would say it doesn't really matter that much, and you are, if anything, you'll just be, I mean, at that point, you'll be, you'll have some more non-sale data, you'll have more time, more yeah. data that you've collected over time, so, I I don't know, I, if I were you, I would just kind of, I'd turn off my stats, um, just keep doing what you're doing, and let it run on autopilot for a while, you know, keep doing your emails, and plug yeah. it from time to time in your emails and blog posts and stuff, but then... You know, because that'll give you. I mean, it the, the summertime is just a crappy time for sales in general. It's hard to it, it's hard to generalize how something's going to do. Um, so so more you know, more data at this point will be helpful when you go to revise yeah. it. I need to cut over my like on my on my other list because I've got the two lists now. Mm-hmm. That uh, the how to market yourself list that just has the email sequence of four or five emails has 511 subscribers now. Wow, and my main list has like 3,400. So I need to actually pull those 511 over to the main list and just combine it so it's all one list, and then just set up an autoresponder sequence for like, and maybe just space out the four emails uh, over like four weeks or something like that for, and then you know, to put it on autopilot for now. So that I'm not because right now what's happening with like those 511 people, they're not getting my regular emails, so they're not like. Right. They're not liking me more. <laughs> they're just like I'm just the spammer guy to them yeah. at this point. So yeah. they're missing out. They could be could eventually become customers, but uh, I don't know. It's so complicated trying to figure out all this crap with it the marketing. Is. Like I just need a simple yeah. solution. There's, there's so many ways to do it too. That's the thing. They all work if with the right touch. Like yeah, there's so many ways that work. You have to kind of pick one and then and learn it and figure out what it can do for you, and then you have enough knowledge to be able to determine if something else might work better, or at least you know try it. But it's so easy to just jump around on this stuff, which is what I've done to to this point. Try yeah. try a little of everything. Yeah. You don't really learn anything that well. Yep, that's it's me. Kind of, it's kind of interesting too. Like the the thing I was thinking about also is like, I mean, it doesn't like you could sell nothing, right? And if you market it, like you could sell the biggest piece of crap, and if you market it well, you'll get tons of sales. Like you could make a ton of money. Now, now, you know, caveat here, if you sold total crap, right, you'd have a high return rate, right? right. And that, you that, get that's, no repeat buyers. Which right. You, so, so how much you sell of something is no indication of how good it is. Right. That it, it like this is a hard thing I think to disconnect. Is it's in, it's an indication of how well you marketed the thing. Right, whether you've you've made it, you know, what need that you showed that it filled. The only thing that indicates how quality the product is is what the return rate is. So, so it's kind of it's kind of weird. It's like, you, you know, I don't know, because you because you kind of have this question is like, is your product good enough? Well, that has nothing to do with the marketing. Like, you could you right. could literally market a scam vapor app that had nothing that it was like you literally deliver them. Uh, you know, a piece of paper that says, ha ha, <laughs> thanks for your cash. Hey, you I, could I totally something, market something, something like a, a podcast that. recording solution <laughs> and just be completely full of shit. Yeah. Doesn't exist, oh. right? 
but but that's but it, but it's interesting just just when you when you think about that even pricing doesn't matter it's it's all about like you know the marketing side of it and then and then like I said the refund like if if you if you sell someone something that's not worth the price or you've you've misrepresented it you're gonna have a high return rate yeah right so a little uh, my three year olds here yeah, yeah okay he's <laughs> <laughs> talking to me. I don't know. Oh, I did sell one C++ course with my... Oh, nice. Uh, nice. So it's not bad because I got, like, um, the commission on that was, like, 48 bucks. So yeah, I, I've that, got a, I've got a lot of... You on that than you did on the... Uh, on when we put my uh, my book. Yeah, that's true. Affiliate link up there, so... And I, and I think I could probably sell, like, uh, maybe, like, three or four of those a month of the C++. So, I mean, it's it's an extra couple hundred bucks a month. I, I've got all these revenue sources coming in now from yep. different things, which is Well, when you look cool. at Pat Flynn's uh, monthly reports, I mean, he's got, like, 20 or 30 little tiny revenue streams. Right. Yeah, there's some big boys, but then he's got a, he's got a nice diversity in there. I so. think that's that's an important thing to do as well it's it's hard to not spread yourself too thin you don't want to have so many things that you're doing that you just can't keep track of it all or or do anything effectively but at the same time if you have a working process that can be generalized to many things yeah. then you know continue expanding on those things in that process whenever you can because eventually one of them will become successful or right. eventually you will have so many of them that they collectively become very successful for you. Exactly. Yeah. Or or one of them, yeah, exactly. It like, could just take off like crazy. Right. And then like that's why like as many doors as you can open yeah. as possible. Yeah, um, which, is, which is kind of where I was heading with you know, my question about, hey, should I add – you know, a community message board forum thing to watch me code. It's like, okay, here's another potential idea for, you know, adding value and whatnot. But I think Josh, your response to that is is probably is probably right about becoming a ghost town and not really yeah. being active. Yeah, I've, I've I've been I've been in like I've probably been in half a dozen of these things now. Yeah. Where yeah. like they sell it to you as part of the package, and it's like you know it sounds good, and then you get in and it's like. Hello, hello. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, it, it and yeah. I it always leaves me with a sour taste in my mouth. When yeah. Happens, so, um, but I'm, yeah, like um, I, I've I'm seen trying some, to find something to to add a little more value to. Yeah. That. You could do a weekly hangout or something like that, or a monthly hangout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like mastermind calls. So some things that I've seen that I think probably would be better would be like mastermind calls. Um, I've seen. Uh, some people offer like enhanced access to them, you know. Like um, I was reading something from a copywriter who who has like this tiered tiered approach. Like when he gets an email, if it's somebody, if it's a subscriber, like an email subscriber, mm -hmm. he might answer it if he has time. If it's somebody who's bought one of his products, he's gonna answer it. Right. Yeah. He will definitely. Those people get top tier, you know, get top tier yeah. tier access to him. So that you know that could be. That could be something you could throw in there to sweeten the deal a little bit. I already don't have time to respond to everyone that asks me questions. Yeah. Well, but that might let you eliminate a bunch of them. True. You know, like if you knew that they were, if you had a special <laughs> email address for. <laughs> yeah. True. Or, or if you have like, or automatically if someone emails you, you auto respond. You send an auto responder that says that with the picture that says "buy my shit." And then I'll <laughs> like I only I've decided to only answer email addresses of people who've actually given me money. That's so right. Far, you haven't given me money. So here's five of my products. Buy one of them and then I'll answer your question. You know, now we sound like politicians here yeah. in the States. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I, I think Josh is right though. I mean you don't want to put the extra burden yeah. on yourself and then it might not. I mean if you have like a community manager and you've got someone that's actively yeah. gonna be poking people and Right. And yeah. He, I think even uh, Pat Flynn uh flopped at his because with, with his Facebook page? His no Facebook he, thing or? um I signed up for his breakthrough blogging course, oh, yeah. right? His videos and stuff and, and it was a whole like forum site type, you know, message board and, and the first couple of weeks like we were active on it. There were people active on it. But then I mean 
it just fizzled out. Like yeah, I think the problem is like with forums, because there's a there's a wall there, especially paid forums. You need something to prompt people to come back. Right. You need something to make it a habit. Um, and like an email, you know, email an email group would be better for that because it gets pushed out to everybody automatically versus a forum where you have to go. I mean, nobody's going to go after a week or two, go and, and, you know, log in and see, Oh, I wonder what Derek's forum is doing. You know, eh, right, right, right. Happen. But yeah, I think like there's a few, from what I've heard, like starting a, everybody thinks it's a good idea to start a community when they're building something, but it's really hard to do. I think it sounds like the fizzle guys have managed to do it, but I don't think that there's like a lot of people that have actually been able to pull that off. Yep. I'm eventually going to sign up for that, by the way. Fizzle. <laughs> but I, the only thing holding me back is time. I don't have time to actually yeah, you know. uh, make it to, to – like I think there's a lot of good stuff there, but yeah. when, when am I going to watch these videos? Like. Yeah, you know, I, I know. So. Me too. Like I, I have I – have, there's about 20 different things that I'd really like to do, like info products I'd like to buy or – yeah, I have I have 150 items in my Amazon read list that I would love to read. I, I've got 20 or 30 in my read list as well, but they're all sci-fi novels. Okay, well that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> and I I actively buy and read those. I I go through a, a sci-fi novel every couple, eh, probably once a month, I guess. Every maybe every every two three weeks if I'm really working on it but that's uh, that, that's one of those things I do to get away from all of this yeah this, yeah. this yeah. gets really overwhelming and frustrating and depressing and I want something to just take my brain away and let me not think yeah, yeah. I, know, I, I really want to get back someday <laughs> someday I'd like to get back to reading fiction again I love it I I've been I've been reading the Jack Reacher series um, mm -hmm. which is really really good it just it's you know, I, I I just don't have time mostly. You're time not making it. time for it is really what it is. Yeah yeah well yeah I'm I'm choosing to spend that time on on other things. So. Yeah. And I, I go through periods where, you know, for six months I won't do anything but work. Like that's all yeah. I want to do. I mean it, it's literally all I want to do. That's, I don't want to do anything else. And then I'll I'll be like. Pfft. And I'll go spend six months playing video games and reading sci-fi <laughs> novels. Yeah. You know, it, it's strike while the iron is hot and all that. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a good philosophy to some degree. Like, I don't know, I, I guess I'm kind of doing the same thing now. It's just like I'm taking a few months off here yeah. or there, like every year, and that uh, that helps. But, but, yeah, I mean, while you've got the motivation to do something, you should take mm -hmm. advantage of it. I've had some some interesting luck with Signal Leaf in the last week. Since I since I turned off the 90 day trial, I've had actually two people sign up. Nice. You have no trials at this point. Yeah, I have no trial period at this point. Nice. I have a 30 day money get back guarantee, and oh, man. what I what I need to do right now, it, when we get off of this call, is go put up a page that actually tells you how to get your money back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna. So I, I have this nice big conf confirmation dialog when you um, when you cancel your account, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna write up the help page on you know email me and I'll give you your money back basically, and I'll put a link right. to it from the from the cancellation dialog. Yeah. Nice. So well, that's really cool. That is awesome. And don't just try not to think about how many subscribers you'd have right now. If <laughs> no, see, that that's the thing. If it, when I had the 90-day trial, I would get you know one or two people signing up per week, and I would never earn any money from them. Yeah. yeah. Even even after the 90 days, I would not earn money from 99% of these people. I've right. I've got Sorry. I've got a handful of podcasts that have delivered episodes, and I earned nothing from them because they stopped podcasting before the 90 days was up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, screw that. It's <laughs> like a gym I'm membership. Done with that. It's, you are in the same business as gyms. Yes. That's a gym membership. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. I'm but, I'm getting I'm getting money up front, and if somebody really legitimately doesn't like it, you need to charge or, them a development fee. 
Yeah, <laughs> restocking <laughs> like a gym, like a gym. Yeah. Well, yeah. What you want to do is you want to get people to sign up, uh, to pay for as much in advance as possible, and then you, the, you, ne they never, you never want to, they never want to hear from you again. Like you don't want to talk to them. Right. Like you don't want to remind them that they feel, should feel guilty that they're not actually producing a podcast that they're paying for, right. because because that's going to be ninety percent of the people. It's like they're not going to do. It. You're not going to. You're never going to win the battle of educating people to the point that they actually have the the willpower and and uh, you know and stick to itness to actually right. to continue their podcast. Yeah, so I mean, eighty percent of podcasts die before episode eight. Yeah. It's, one Derek, one thing you might think about there is um, doing a uh, a buy three months and get a discount kind of thing. Yeah, I was, was going to do a year. Okay, okay. yeah, there you go. Yep. For a year and get a month free. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because like John said, collecting as much money up front as possible. Yeah, and yeah. and in this situation, it totally makes sense. It mm -hmm. with. So there, there's an interesting difference between Signal Leaf and Watch Me Code. A lot of people are asking me for one-year subscriptions to Watch Me Code, and I'm not going to do it. Right. Even if I have an entire year worth of screencasts already produced and, and edited and uploaded and scheduled, I'm not going to do that because a one-year subscription puts the onus on me to continue producing. Right. Right. When that year rolls around and they auto renew for three hundred bucks or whatever it is, right. well, crap. Yep. That means I have to continue for the next year. Yep. Right. But with Signal Leaf, if you want to pay me, you know, whatever the the you know ninety bucks is or whatever it is for the low end of a, of a year, and you decide not to use it, well, yeah. you. sorry, yeah. that's. I mean, you paid me. You you made the decision. Now, how many total podcasts do you have right now on Signal Leaf? Uh, how many active or total? <laughs> uh, I guess total. Well, both total and active. Total, I have fifty-one podcasts. Okay, uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Active, I, I need to build a report that actually gives me an active list. I think it's close to twenty. So let's see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, I think it's closer to 30. Okay. Nice. Um, that's active podcasts. Um, I only have 13 paying accounts, though. So that's of still, those 30 podcasts, bad, yeah. I'm, I'm it's a still... a lot better than, than you were. Yeah, it's a whole yeah. lot better than I was. Yeah. Uh, and, and actually, I think, I think two of those, uh, two or three of those that I have listed as paying are actually uh, um, sponsored. So I have, I have a close okay. to 10 paying accounts right now around 30 active podcasts, um, most of which will probably never convert into a paying customer. So that's, yeah. I mean, I'm so glad to have gotten rid of the, that 90-day trial, yeah. gotten rid of a trial period. Mm -hmm. You yeah. should blog about that, honestly. Um, yeah, I, I, I really should. Yeah, I bet you that would be a, a nice little hacker news bump for you. Yeah. Because, like, that whole freemium versus, versus paid model thing seems right. like over always generate some discussion over there. And you should not be putting your customers onto a mailing list for Signal Leaf. I'm not. I'm not. Because you don't have any other products right now to sell them, and, and if they hear from you, they might remember that they're not doing their podcast and cancel. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just being bluntly you know, honest here, that's, it's, you, you really don't want them to hear from you because they're going to – you don't want to make people feel guilty. As much as I as, as I hate that idea, it's it's true. I mean, it's I paid for three years worth of gym membership, and I went, I think I went for six months. I did really well for six months. Yeah. And then I I had a baby, and yeah. then I paid for the next year, thinking, okay, I'm I finally have time to get back, and I went for like a month. Yeah. Throughout the year, and then I paid for the month, thinking, okay, now I'm really going to do this, and. It's the same kind of deal. I, I, I hate that idea, but that's how, that's how this business works. That's how, I mean, you're in a, in the same model. It has to be. You're not going to change people. That's the thing. Is like you, 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 their habits are so ingrained. You're not going to change it so that 90% yeah. of you know the 90% of people that end up not actually following through with their podcast, you're never going to make a dent in that and make yeah. them follow through more. So you have to li live with. I mean, that's the market that you have. So yeah.
All on right. that sour note. <laughs> yep, on that depressingly human nature note. That wraps up John's view of the human nature. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you guys, you all suck. <laughs> yeah. All right, Any, anyone got any, anything else? We got don't think so. I, I have a lot of things I need to do. I, I uh, my most recent sign up for Signal Leaf um, just emailed me asking about multiple users per account, which I have all of the infrastructure in place. I've yeah. just never put the code in there to to make it happen. So I might I might want to get on that soon because that's something that I've talked about for us a hundred times right. as well. Yeah, I've and got, I think it could be a nice little yeah thing to set you apart. I've got one episode that's still being hit by that bug with the whole bunch of... Yeah, I know. Um, I'm dealing with the the statistics company that I'm using. Um, it, it's, it's an issue on their end with me trying to delete more than 50,000 records at a time. Um, they oh. have... Their, their entire system is set up to optimize for rights. And so reads uh, um, for writes and reads. So the the deletion process or the update process is really, really, really taxing on their systems. So they have a hard and fast limit of fifty thousand deletes, and yeah. you have sixty five thousand entries in um, that episode. Yeah. So I, I, I what I have to do is figure out small enough chunks of time frame, you know, a few hours at a time. To batch, yeah. In order to, to get under that 50,000 limit. Or Sean could just use this as an opportunity to go after sponsors. That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> like, look, look I got 65,000 hits on this one episode. And this is just one episode. Imagine. Just one. Imagine yeah. how many hundreds I'm getting now. <laughs> yeah, let's not look at the other episode. <laughs> I've got to pull it up right here. I can tell you. <laughs> That is one other thing that would be a nice feature would be um, like when you go to the episodes list uh, to have the number of views r right there on that list view. You know what it's I'm talking about? It's a very about? expensive call for me to make. Oh, is it? The number? Yeah. I mean, it's, oh, it's, it is like not just in terms of processing and time and resource. I mean, it's, it's expensive. It costs me money every time I make that call. Every time you refresh the stats page, you're charging me money. What? How's that? Oh, because of the... Well, I'm going to work on an automator script now. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I have... Um, I have... I, I recently... The, 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 the service I use charges um, per... The charges by the number of events that you store and by the number of requests that are made for analytics, oh, which I totally see. makes sense on their business model. That is their entire business model. So I, I have, um, in the last month, I went from the $20 a month plan to the $125 a month plan because of the number of um, events that I'm pushing into their system and the number of analytics requests that I'm making. So I'm working with them. Um, there's a third company involved in this to build, or, or in my case, use a uh, cash mechanism so oh, that that's it's that's not so expensive okay. for me to read the data. It's still going to cost me all that money to push the data because I'm generating so I'm generating like a hundred thousand events a day. It's ridiculous. Wow. So, I have a feature request for uh, for signal links. Well, too. If you could it's add, like a day. If you could add a, a feature that lets me see how many subscribers I got in Mailchimp. <laughs> I'm on. I'm in. <laughs> I won't even bother to start a podcast now. I'll just. Sign up for that. Just buy that. <laughs> yep. All righty, guys. Well, All I right. gotta, I gotta write some chapters in my book. All right. Don't oh, check your gotta... stats. No stats. No yeah, stats. No All stat. right. I gotta close my stat window. Then. John just like puts his elbow through his monitor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. I'll talk to you guys next All week. Right. See you guys. Wanna start a business, but you just know how to code. Listen to John Josh and 